Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. As usual, I am your host, Selassie Fiawe. There's renewed hope in the Ghana Black Stars after we have found six new players joining us this week. And uh, the reports are that Ghana have been tipped for a quarterfinal finish. We'll talk about that extensively today. We're also going to talk about Kudus Mohammed, who has become a person of interest for Nice. More details on that coming up in the Ghana Premier League could possibly have a headline sponsor ahead of the next season. I'll be revealing who that is to you. As usual, subscribe if you have not. Click on the notification bell to get more updates. Breaking news is that uh, Seth Blatter, former FIFA president, and Michelle Platini, who were accused of fraud, have been acquitted of fraud, bribery, and corruption charges that were alleged against them back in 2015. They are free now. Uh, but uh, it's going to be quite a road back to recovery for both of them. That's not the focus of my story today. Quite interesting breaking news on that front. Let me know what you think in the comments box on that. But today we're going to talk first of all about Kudus Mohammed, who has turned up as a person of interest uh, for OG Nice in the French Liga. And now the story is saying that uh, according to L'Equipe, and they are looking to strengthen their midfield and is looking a close interest in taking close interest in Kudus Mohammed. Now the transfer of the Ghanaian could cost around 12 million euros. Uh, before signing for Ajax, Kudus was closely tracked by Ren and Strasbourg. OG is looking to snap him up. I do not see Kudus Mohammed leaving Ajax. The development of such a club is quite great for him. I don't think it's time yet for him to leave. But anything is possible in this world of football and transfer news. You never know what will happen. But would you advise Kudus Mohammed to leave? Let me know what you think in the comments box on that front. I'll jump right into uh, my next story, which has to do with the Ghana Premier League and the possible sponsor. For some time now, the Ghana Premier League has been operating without a sponsor. Yes, if you're quite aware of that, I'm sure. It looks like a new sponsor is coming up in a bet cake. Now, I don't know what you think about a betting company being the headline sponsor for the Ghana Premier League, which has had issues with match fixing. But the latest on that front is that the Ghana Premier League is set to have a new sponsor. GFA are in talks with them. And now the story says that the Ghana Premier League is reportedly on the verge of landing a headline sponsor, which would be huge boost for the competition, which has been without a sponsor since 2018. Now, according to reports, the FA is in advanced talks with Bet King, a betting company uh, interested in investing heavily in the country's top flight. Since last month, a Bet King and the FA, led by Ket Okreku, have been discussing the Premier League sponsorship package. According to a source uh, familiar with the negotiations, both parties may reach an agreement in the coming days uh, to make an official announcement. Uh, there have been advanced discussions and meetings uh, between Beking and the FA for a takeover as the official headline sponsors of the Ghana Premier League, the source told Kick GH. And now, the deal worth millions of dollars, uh, which I can't disclose the figures for some reasons, it's about 80% done. The Ghana Premier League is set to become the second top tier competition to be sponsored by Betking uh, following the Ethiopian League. The league has been without a title sponsor for three years after a five year deal, $10 million contract signed between the FA and Xylophone Cash expired prematurely due to the financial institution's dissolutions. However, the league has many category sponsors, including NASCO. So the Ghana Premier League I could be seeing a headline sponsor in Bet King. Whether you agree with that or not, or whether a betting company should be uh, sponsoring a league which already has had its reputation damaged by match fixing allegations, is another conversation altogether. A title sponsor is long overdue, and I think uh, it will go a long way to help as to whether Bet King are the right ones another conversation altogether. My final story has to do with Ghana's chances at the World Cup, which has been heightened by the introduction of six new players. Yes, it's going to be reported that Ghana have been tipped uh, to finish 
as high as the quarterfinal, which would be a repeat of what they did in their best ever performance at the World Cup in 2010. And these six players have come out to join the team and I'll run you through a profile of each of them. They're familiar with some, uh, but let me start off with uh, Steven Ambrosius, who plays for Hamburger SP. The Ghanaian born a German had a difficult 2021-22 season where he missed out completely due to a cruciate ligament rupture. However, uh, before his recent injury woes, he made 26 appearances for Hamburger SV, playing as a regular center back for the club. It was during this time of his life that he got caught up to the German under 21, uh, but played no part in the under 21 UEFA European Championship. I think Ambrosius is someone we've called up before. He did not honor the call up, but this time he has switched nationalities. At 23, Ambrosius gives Ghana a good prospect uh, for the future. He may not be picked for the 2022 World Cup, but a slow integration into the team will see him replace the aging Daniel Lamate or Alexander Jiku. He plays for Strausberg still. This is his, his deal was botched there. Patrick Firefer talked about him, watched a video of him yesterday. He plays for Darmstadt 98 after missing the first two games of the 21-22 season due to coronavirus. Pfeiffer played every single game for Darmstadt in Bundesliga 2. He also scored the winner with Darmstadt 98 faced FC Paderborn in November. And now Patrick Pfeiffer has one striking figure. His height stands tall 6 feet 5 inches. And that is the average height of a basketball player. So believe me when I say Pfeiffer is really tall and the best part is that he's just 22 he will come in handy in the future uh, when the likes of Amati and Jiku have aged and well beyond their prime the next one is Ransford Yeboa uh, Konis Doffa Konix Doffa of Hamburger SV as well uh, Ransford I told him about I talked about him on Monday he's a 20 year old forward who recently Definitely one of for the future, a striker, a forward. He falls in the same generation of Abdul Fatawi Saku, Wafenejan, Kamal Din Sulemana, and Mohamed Kudus, who have been tipped to take full charge of the Black Stars in a few years. Standing at six feet, Kones Gaffa missed just four games across all competitions last season, playing 30 games, scoring five goals and assisting five in Bundesliga 2 for Dynamo Dresden. With all these players available for the Black Star selection, the coach will have a headache. The next one we'll talk about is Salisu and Mohamed. We know about Mohamed Salisu extensively currently with Southampton. Also, uh, we've talked about him before. Tariq Lamte with Brighton and Hove Albion. Great addition to the team. And Inaki Williams, uh, the match talked about one there. So that's a short profile of the players uh, that Ghana have gotten and has made them tipped to be one of the teams to finish in the quarterfinals at least. Their chances have increased and enhanced with these new additions. What do you think about that? Do you believe in the hype? Do you think we are set for ultimate success? Let me know what you think in the comments box on this one here. Talking to you about uh, uh, the GPL getting a headline sponsor, Kudus Mohamed to Nice, and the profile of some of the players that have been caught up, three of them which has increased Ghana's chances of making it as far as the quarterfinals, according to the analysts. I'll see you guys in the next one. Enjoy your day.